y'all it's delaney and it's katie and this is classically black podcast where we talk all things classical music and being black in the profession with trap bees playing in the background the what <laughs> <laughs> you didn't have to do that you could have just went with you know what it is <laughs> it's episode 23 you know exactly what what it is you know I what wonder, time it is i wonder how long it's gonna take for people to get over that and be like oh, we get it trap bees playing in the background <laughs> but it's our it's our little thing you know people shows have that i think it's true yeah i listen to the friends on the bed well to the friends that we talk all things mental health mental uh-huh. hygiene and because who in the hell want a musty brain something like that <laughs> <laughs> mental Ooh. health mental wealth mental hygiene yeah because who in the hell want a musty brain Who? Oh! every week same thing okay but you know we back in this piece again you know what i'm saying we here to to do something i don't know what we even be doing all right um we want to talk about the dragon we got in the studio class the other day <laughs> <laughs> he didn't drag first of all fix your face <laughs> oh, i mean there, we, we must there i i felt incredibly proud in that moment just because i feel like when was the last time that happened where it's like you have a black faculty member Working with two black students. Like, that's just lit at right. Eastman. I just feel, I mean, Miss Taylor, I, when, I, when we did a little video with Adrian, I mean, I, we put in a studio class. I don't know why he had time for that, but he listened to, oh, because Adrian was going to do the Renensky on a recital and he ended up not having time for it to be on his recital. He couldn't learn because, um, you know, he already having so much sickening other pieces I mean, going. Right. Whatever. I, we've been that successful before, but it was just like so dope to me. He's like, Yo, he's working with us, like a black faculty member at Eastman working on this. But the dragon ensued. I mean, he <laughs> he sat there. You know what I'm saying? He watched us play this thing way under temple. To me, it wasn't. That, I understand what he's saying. Like, fill it in two, right? But like, to me, it wasn't that slow. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like, I still was sweating profusely. I same. <laughs> We're literally dripping. But, yeah. I was, like, came through dripping. <laughs> like for real. I was so annoyed. I'm like. It was like, am I eating? Like, I, I told you, like, I haven't been that bad since I used to eat meat. Like, I don't know what was going on. Because there was no AC in there. <laughs> yeah, it was high. We had, like, long sleeves on. And then we were sweating already. Because we was like, how this going to go? <laughs> <laughs> That's why I was chilling. Because I took a beta blocker. Because I can't. So I was chilling. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I wasn't nervous. But I'm like, what this man finna say? <laughs> and here he go. I know it's hard, but that's not my problem. I was like, you don't. You can lower your voice, actually. And, yeah, I mean. I mean, how you feel about it? People who don't know what we're talking about, Delaney and I are playing eyeglasses for an event coming up. An event? We're going to leave it at that. Um, what event? I said we're going to leave it at that. What and event? Do not do this. And Sister. Please leave it alone. Because last episode, you wouldn't let me move on until I told you what's the same uh, name. So I have an obligatory event. <laughs> <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> also known as a degree recital. I mean, it's going to be... Oh, dang, thing. I shouldn't have left space around that so you can edit it out. What? No, I was about to say, I shouldn't have left no space around it, so it would be hard to edit out. Degree gonna... recital, degree recital, degree... <laughs> 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 you are just trash. Just trash. I mean, it's going to be what it's going to be, you know what I'm saying? We're going to be there, and then it's going to... Nah, I don't know. We're going to be there, and it's going to be over. I mean... I definitely had a moment of like because i thought to be honest with the eyeglasses there's some stuff that i was playing out of tune because especially like when they said like the easy stuff y'all play out of tune i was like you could you could relax like because mm-hmm. i heard some of them like just normal eighth notes being like okay katie what arpeggio was that like which one is a major mm-hmm. minor augmented like it, it's like i heard some notes go by and i'm like you be playing a blues scale <laughs> <laughs> honestly i heard some stuff and i'm like what kind of Vayburn chord oh progression was that <laughs> like but it's like the fast stuff you know i learned it so i'm like yeah it's gonna be straight and then he go well you gotta go like 20 clicks faster and uh into and you gotta do and there's the bass sound and there's the viola sound and there's the bass viola sound and there's that viola bass i'm just like <laughs> this is in two weeks so i felt a little overwhelmed not gonna lie i'm like Oh, did you listen to the recording? Girl, no, I didn't listen to the damn recording. Oh, I thought you was going to say it. I thought that's what you meant when you were like, when you heard him say that. But oh, you I, meant I, in the I, moment. I remember him saying that. Mm. I, I'm not, I probably, that's why I don't record myself playing because I probably won't listen to it. I can send it to you. Yeah, I'll, I won't listen to the whole thing, but I'll listen to spots. I'll just see how, I, I might could see how long my heart will take. Because you don't know how bad it sounds until the recording. That is true. Because some notes be passing by, you be like, Wow. 
but I feel like the things that are really that bad, you already remember them from the performance. That's true. So, but you would. Delaney was. I was like, if this girl don't play this bass, it was good. Meanwhile, I'm gonna go to my lesson today, and JB gonna be like, so. Meanwhile, everything is wrong. I need to be in JB's studio because he ain't say nan thing about that tempo on Saturday. Here go Miss Taylor. <laughs> but he is about like, well, if you can't do it faster, then don't. Like he's like, ain't no use in doing it faster. It's not gonna sound good. And that's what but also it's said, come a long way since then. Yeah, that's what Mr. Taylor said. He was like, let's go sixty, and if it's gonna be fifty five in the performance, it's gonna be fifty five in the performance. But and to y'all <laughs> whose ears perking up, that's the half note, not the quarter. Yeah, note. Don't, <laughs> don't get fresh now. <laughs> but um, and people at the studio were like, dang, she really playing that thing on a bass. So, and, he, and Mr. Taylor know he trifling because he was like, "All right, so we gonna up the tempo." I already know one person who ain't gonna be happy. <laughs> and I was, <laughs> I was like, "Right." He's like, "And we don't want to go slower to compensate for the bass." I was like, "Okay." <laughs> and then he tacked on at the end talking about or the viola. I'm like, "You know, that's not why you said that." <laughs> but I mean, I, I mean, but, I get it. <laughs> okay, but also the thing with Mr. Taylor is that was a genuine comment. That wasn't yeah. shade because he would have left it if he wanted to be shady. He would have left it. Yeah, at, we're not gonna compensate for the bass. Right. And that would have been period. <laughs> you know, like that's the thing with him. I feel like a lot of teachers have been like, or the viola. No, he right. meant the or the viola. I know he, but I also know that when he said compensate for the bass, he meant the instrument and not me. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Personally. yeah. Oh, yeah. I didn't, even, I didn't even think about it being about you. You know what yeah. I'm saying? But it's just like, if but Mr. I said, if he gonna be shady, he gonna be shady. <laughs> Mr. Taylor, he said, I, put, I played Bach after that. He was like, I don't care what you feel. <laughs> you don't know what I be dealing with. Yeah, you said a couple of things, bro. I was just like, oh. Miss Taylor, Miss Taylor gathers me. I said, cause I said the same thing to him when he was like, "No, Miss Taylor, like, if it's a, it's a sick and ship, I'm gonna give you a show." He's like, "Or you could just play it right." Ooh, Miss Taylor. <laughs> and when he said, um, when he was like, "And we won't be playing it at that tempo, at least not, not at any recital I'll be at." I was like, <laughs> I was like, <laughs> he's so rude, but like in the nicest way. But and when he said that, I was like, "Dang, you really not coming?" <laughs> Why? Why the say? T- <laughs> That's how I know. Like we, me and Miss Taylor are a match because he, well, he was like, "Not no recital I'm finna be at." I'm like, "Guess you're not coming." That's like <laughs> literally what I said in my mind. How can we change the time? Not telling you, you come at three thirty. He was at one thirty. <laughs> like when he said that, this is my first thought. I'm like, "Well, gang, guess you ain't coming. Guess you got Sunday afternoon all open." <laughs> <laughs> oh, which Sunday? Please check my privacy at this time. Because you know they started opening up the live streams. Now you don't need the the, the the password no more. So it's just public. You gotta request a live stream though. With Nana. I won't be. I will be. You can't do that. But she, I'm be like, you know we friends, Nana. You know. You got any news this week? <laughs> just that. Mm-mm. When I saw that, I said, thank God. You have to request the live stream. No. You're not gonna request the live stream? No. What, what if your family, you're not? You should be here news this week all right <laughs> um so a couple of weeks ago i had an article about the the south florida symphony that wasn't paying them singers the black singers from mm-hmm. porgy and bess mm-hmm. um so that article was written by one of the like the singers friends or something yeah yeah, yeah. i remember um that. and then little did we know they also didn't pay the orchestra so you know the singers oh, yeah. eventually got paid well, it's been two months and the orchestra still ain't got paid. Yeah, I haven't seen that circling around on um on Facebook. One girl stepped down. Yeah, exactly. And they tried to send a, a contract after the fact, extended the date. But I'm like, what's the point of extending the date if y'all don't intend to, to pay nobody by that date? Oh. <laughs> so basically what they're trying to do is this... Um, it spread the word about it because apparently other orchestras in that area are like, oh, we don't got to pay nobody? Okay. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and are um, basically adopting this whole um, this whole method of like just sending the invoice rather than like um, like honoring the contract. Wow. And I just <clears throat> went over contracts in my class last night and some of them are like, like they seem extra, but also it's like people like – conjure up these extra contracts because they got burned in the past by stuff mm-hmm. like this like the contract we read it was like we gonna get paid this much per 15 minutes you hold us over and yeah. we're not guaranteed to stay over <laughs> um and it's like that's like yeah but it also was like if we gotta bring we got an equipment charge for blah, blah, blah. and musicians get taken advantage of so much i remember i was doing a festival and they held us over mm-hmm. and i started i was like i'm ready to pack up but i turned around and i looked at my friend and he was like 
just stay because I'm not trying to look crazy tonight. Mm. And it's like little things like yeah. that, you know, where it's like you uphold the music. Um, but I'm, I uphold the contract. You know what I'm saying? You're not going to take advantage of me, especially like for this particular institution. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? It's just like, <clears throat> sometimes it's like, I, I'm about it. You know what I'm saying? Cause I always say, if I want to play for free, I can stay at school. Mm-hmm. So it's like, you know, musicians get burned, you know, you, get taken advantage of you know it's just like it's just pathetic to me mm-hmm. you know what i'm saying ain't nobody playing for free right um and the contract they had like all this i'm talking about the contract that i looked at um in class <laughs> which for whatever reason it was for this trio that was something called spike fiddle sack butt and bagpipes and i was like i don't really know why what kind of, okay just keep going because i was like why have that when like you could have anything else including silence <laughs> <laughs> I did not see that coming. You <laughs> suck. What does it say? <laughs> um, now, basically, it's just saying that um, that a lot of Floridians um, who are who are young musicians, they're saying that orchestras like the uh, South Florida Symphony are the reasons why they they leave in Florida to to get mm-hmm. their jobs, and because people like this symphony and um, those around it are continuing to do stuff like this because. Um, you know, like like you said, people are getting taken advantage of, and you don't always want to make a scene. Right. But it's like sometimes because sometimes when you make a scene, you're considered like uh, difficult to work with. Yeah, and then all of a sudden they somebody asked them about you, and then that's what they mm-hmm. bring up, and now you're not getting jo- jobs. You blackballed mm-hmm. in this city, and and also my breath, hold my breath for gateways. You know, I mean, but even though the, the organization that I played for is literally not respected at all, so oh. <laughs> really. You want to link it in the mic? Let me ask me. I might tell you. But now I feel that day. <laughs> I'm sick of them. I mean, <clears throat> you know, we're not going to get into that. And, That's I'm, our... and I'm, I am not alone. That is truly our classical black business. So let me <laughs> not get into that. Um, <clears throat> and then the next thing I have is not coming up. Okay. Um, so Carlos is Correy. Every time your lips go like that, it's something <laughs> trifling. What he do? What Carlo do? So, um, he's the um the music director of the American Youth Symphony, which is a pre professional orchestra in Los Angeles. I don't know if other people have it. Like we have two of those. We have Young Musicians Foundation debut orchestra and the American Youth Symphony, which is like a pre professional orchestra where like you get paid to be in it, but it's like you don't gotta be like it's a lot of college students. Like people go to Colburn and USC, like like if Eastman has something like that. It would be like, and they do like seasons and like everything. I think the closest thing to that would be like New World and Civic, right? I was going to say Civic. That's what I was going to say because I was thinking something <clears throat> totally different for Chicago. But yeah, yeah. But I feel like even New World is a little bit more. And also, than like that. Civic. If I I don't want to speak out my neck because I'm not in Civic, but I don't know like how like it seems like the ones you're talking about in LA like perform. Let me not say, but Civic is like. I don't know how often they have concerts. Mm. Oh, okay. Well, um, he um he's made uh he was making the new season for his uh for his orchestra and he was like, Why not make this the year of the woman? So, you know, it's women's history month. Well it won't be when this episode comes out. But um yeah, so he's made a pledge to uh program fifty percent um female composers for okay. his, uh yeah, for their upcoming season. So Carlo. Right. If you in the area, go to um american youth symphony um i see they're half female composers um and then last but not least got a interesting story it's it's like a like it's not a story itself but it will spark conversation shortly so there's a composer (laughs) there's a composer um have you heard of michael abels Mm -mm. okay so he's an american composer and he um was tracked down um by jordan peele to do the music for get out and for us Mm -hmm. um yeah so i just thought it was um interesting that he um yeah that jordan peele like i guess heard his heard his music Mm -hmm. and was like oh we must get him i'm like Mm -hmm. this must be dummy creepy he said he wanted them (laughs) but um yeah so i guess you'll have to go see us to to see his music i mean let me know how it goes 
<laughs> there's um there's also an interview with him like a video interview so i'm not gonna like play it or anything but it's like a, vid- a video interview um about like him as a composer and like him like how, what it was like working on um these music these movies and um like basically the process of like storytelling mm-hmm. um like of different types like when he's working on different things yeah basically like his thought process um behind that so that was pretty cool um shout out to melissa white oh right, right. she's mm-hmm. on there right um yeah so we'll put a link in the description of his interview and also so that you can buy katie a ticket to go see us is by, by delaney and, uh, what? one as well now we both know first of all <laughs> delaney and i are pathetic like honestly <laughs> i'm scared of any i told you my friend sent me a, a gift and it was just the one it was just the one where it was normal winston duke <laughs> Switching over to, are you done? I'm not even doing nothing. You're not doing anything? Mm-mm. You're going to lie before God? You're not doing anything? Not right now, no. At all? You weren't doing anything? It depends on when you're talking about. No, I'm talking about <laughs> you, know, <laughs> you are trash. It was just the one of Winston Duke switching over to evil Winston Duke, mm-hmm. and I flinched. Remember and when you did the... <laughs> Oh my god. Like goodness. so me and Delaney were like, we nosy, right? So we not gonna go see the movie. However, I must know what happens. So she texted me, she's like, I read the synopsis. And I'm like It was terrifying. I had to stop in between. So now I'm like, All right, well let me go ahead and read it too. And I'm getting nervous. My heart beating for what, Katie? You're <gasps> reading you're reading prose <laughs> on Wikipedia. Prose can be scary. So I was like, All right, bet I'm definitely not gonna go see it now. And then um on top of that, I read um, uh, some articles about, like, explaining the ending. This, these are no spoilers. You have nothing to worry about. You don't have to skip through. <laughs> explaining the ending. And um, oh, I won't be reading it. After I read that, so I, I like, sent I'm not reading anything else. And I saw the picture of the young Lupita. Just, like, a normal, beautiful little black girl, but just in blue lighting, looking scared. And I was like, this ain't it. Because this little girl not going to pop up at my house. Right. And now you got me thinking about... And I researched doppelgangers, too, because I was like... I, I at first, I thought, you know, because people be like, oh, yeah, I saw your doppelganger, blase, blase. And it was just like a cute little, like, colloquially. Even the article said, like, colloquially speaking, like, yeah. Like, people just be like, oh, yeah, it's someone who looks just like you. But historically, they're supposed to be evil. I'm like, so now, yeah. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Nope. That's not for me. I support black business. You know, I might buy a ticket and mm-hmm. not go. But I will see us when it comes out on DVD or Blue Way. What are y'all girls doing? I don't know. When it comes out. Right. It might be co- on Netflix or something. Yeah. And I can watch it in the middle of the day. I won't um with someone else and i can fast forward don't be messy i can fast forward (laughs) delaney is so Uh, y'all just don't delaney is trash like through and through let's move on (laughs) i'm not seeing us let me know how it goes shout out to melissa white right i I won't be saying it Um, under any circumstance ever so because i said the same thing about get out and i watched get out yeah i wasn't expecting get out to be scary though i was i don't like suspense any type any form i mean that is true but i wasn't expecting it i don't know why i wasn't expecting it to be scary because i feel like the way they marketed it it wasn't marketed as a horror film us from the very beginning they said it was a horror film so i was like i already know i'm not going to see that like even you when i knew that that (gasps) you was so scary you was scary but like see we talking about us and you you see all me (laughs) like also like the artist her how does she do anyway sorry that's not even related but um with you, that I'm on, a, I, on the front of my seat. It's so scary. It's, he's so creepy. And he's so, but you know what? The more I, I just don't like suspense. So like when he like, when, when he like, that music start coming up, yeah. I already know. And when he snatch Benji, you know what I'm saying? <gasps> when you be I, sna- even, I can't do. Stuff I don't like do that. like I don't do snatching. I don't do people around corners. Coming I'm, out of nowhere. Coming mm. out of nowhere. I don't do goals. I, I'm a wimp. I can't. Like through and through. I don't. I know. would just my soul would just leave my body. <laughs> like I literally like if I went to the theater, it's like. It's so bad for me. Like, it was like, whatever, go see it. I just be on my phone the whole time. I will be distracted. Like, I just, I will have to leave. I just, I, ha- I haven't been the same. And then, you know, I try a little, I try a little cute horror films. Like, hey, da, 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 da. I watched Bird Box. I was uneasy the entire time. Um, I watched, um, I haven't been the same since The Exorcist. Girl, I don't understand why you're putting yourself in these positions. Because my though. friends be like, girl, it's not even scary. So I hear out now I'm looking dumb because I can't sleep. <laughs> no, like, I've seen, I'm so faint of heart. <laughs> I might go see, the, you know, the Octavia Spencer movie, Ma. <gasps> Ma? Oh. Because that, 
Like, that don't seem scary. It just seemed like I don't know how to describe. Yeah, it. Yeah, I'm gonna wait till the synopsis come out and see if there's any jumping out or whatever. The re- also the reason why I want to see Get Out is because it's like it was about like you go you know to these white people house and then they they dumb me crazy. I'm like okay, well we gotta see you know and the whole yeah, sunken place thing and like. But I was just like, since, it, you know, the, the whole racial aspect of it, I was like, well, <clears throat> this must be seen. Mm-hmm. Um, and thankfully, the only scary thing that happened was, well, there was a couple things. It was when they hit that deer and then. Because it came out of nowhere. Yeah. So, again, like that whole and jumping then, out. I just don't. It's not scary. It's a deer. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? But I just don't but like But that it. impact is so loud and, and it, it comes right, out of nowhere. nowhere. And then, yeah. And then when he hit the brother in the head, like, because that also came out of nowhere. And and then when the guy was running, like, and just. And the whole thing at the end with the, him in the chair and all that stuff like yeah. that. I was uneasy. I'm like, I don't like feeling like how he's going to get out of this. Yeah. I don't. Yeah. So it's like, that really narrows down my scope of movies. Right. Documentaries. I watch, yeah. I watch action movies. Rom-coms. I can do action depending. Like Final Destination is not my kind of action movie. I'm not watching that. Mm-hmm. But like, you know, little superhero where they jumping around and stuff like that. I can do that. Depending on, because you know, in Infinity War, when that car, when they was at, at Dr. Strange's mansion or whatever, and they, and they started and that hearing car, that. Yeah. That, that made me jump. Yeah. I'm so, <laughs> girl, it's, it's, it's hopeless. Pray for me. <laughs> it's like, People be looking at me like, really, Katie? I'm right. like, yes, really. Mind your business and lower your voice. <laughs> All right. So let's move on to intermission. Okay. So when this episode is being recorded, it's still Women's History Month. Right. Um, so we're going to play a little activity. I want you to... Let me pull it up, pull it up, pull it up. Back, back, backing it up. I'm the king of talking. Then I'm backing it up. Back. Back, back, and it up. Throw that money over here, girl. That's what's up. Shout out to, uh, what's his name? Paradise. Is it Paradise? I don't know. <coughs> Featuring Cardi B? Okay, that's not the point. Okay. So I want you to build a four to five person girl group based on women in the, in classical music in any capacity. So it could just be like, I think these girls will be bad together. Or it could be like, who's the leader, second in command, dancer, etc. So you can fashion it based on a pre-existing girl group like well 3LW wouldn't work because they're on, there's three I know I was gonna do Destiny Child yeah, I was gonna do Destiny Child too and I was like that doesn't work is there more than four why I gotta be four I just said four to five so think of five cause then Destiny Child SWV is there any girl groups that I fought for I feel like there is one the Cheetah Girls are there four of them yep it's Raven that girl Adrian Ballon yeah, Kelly the white Williams girl. and a white girl Oh, that's it. Sabrina and Brian. Mm-hmm. That's four. Oh. They weren't really like, are they a real girl group? I can't tell. Right. They I did go to a Cheetah Girls concert. Did you? Yeah, yeah I'm upset. They did go on little. tour. I can't think of no yeah. other girl group that's more than, I feel like you start getting into problems when it's more than three. Right. And I mean, Destiny Child used to be four. Did they? Yeah. <clears throat> I don't really know my Dusty Child's history. I know there's that toy lucky. I just know that on Twitter there was a video circul- circulating of no, that Beyonce one girl who. Gather? Yeah, she, she couldn't sing and Beyonce sent her home. And Beyonce was like, well, <laughs> I forgot <laughs> what she said, but it was rude. Right. And it wasn't rude, like, rude. It was just like, you got gathered. <laughs> she was like, you can either leave. And she's like, oh, yeah. She was like, something like, yeah. well, all my stuff is here. She's like, well, we can mail you your stuff. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I won't even show my face again. I would, you get a job. Is it? I mean. Okay, fine. Three to five. Wh- what you got? What you, what you build? So for my violinist, I'm going to pick. Caitlin, because Caitlin's sickening. Well, that goes without Sick. saying. Right. <clears throat> I feel like at a certain point, we're just going to stop even saying who the violinist is. I mean, we might as well. Because who else? Uh, who else would. Caitlin. She are. And she be a. Caitlin has a big sound, too. Oh, in addition to who? To other people who have big sounds. Don't try me. I'm speaking of people that have big sounds. Let it go. For the violinist. For the violas, who's jealous? No, it's gonna be. I'm gonna do a three person group. Okay. Because mm-hmm. too many people, things get complicated. Also, I've been in two quintets, and neither of them turned out well. So, <laughs> um, <clears throat> so um, yeah. So the violist slash front woman of the group. Are you um, joking? It's gonna be Catherine Brown. Are you joking? Who's gonna be like? 
like i mean i just feel like y'all should think of the viola sound that y'all have heard and then multiply it by like a thousand that's not true and then add a couple more on top of that and then plug it into some speakers and then blast it and then put a microphone on those and then then like that's like a quarter of katie's sound a quarter mm-hmm. everyone in my studio sounds the same girl the same you went to cindy's recital exactly she cindy sound- didn't sound the same as you cindy also has a big sound she also has a big sound but she didn't sound the same as you okay finish yourself because i'm you sounded good she didn't sound the same as you i'm i'm exhausted what's next <laughs> who was the last person is it you yeah so what are we doing we going on tour are we dancing what are we doing oh it's a string trio <laughs> <laughs> we're actually doing tricks <laughs> so you and caitlin are gonna go up on on either side of my base right in the seat bouts mm-hmm. just put a foot there and just like a cheerleading squad <laughs> use your viola and your violinist pom-poms go 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 squad All right and then i'm gonna spin it around and then you guys are gonna do a backflip off of it, right? I regret this whole entire animation. Well, it's your idea, so wow, should have known. Um, <laughs> my girl group is, of course, number one, Melissa White. I just love her. I love her down. She's just great. She's phenomenal. Um, she's so so nice. Um, and sometimes she answers asks my questions when I text her because I just call text her to complain um then the another the second person is gonna be amber i can't say her last name um it's a sec i don't know but she's a violist um i don't know where she's from Mm -hmm. but she did her studies at she did her dma studies at rice so she knows my undergrad teacher and she's just sickening and now she's in like a she does her um, she's in a string duo with her husband who's a violinist so i love her also of course joining them is beverly kane baker who's just I just stand first. Oh, she she did a whole bunch of recordings for Hail Stork, you know, I've been listening to whatever, and she just sounds so good. It's just like insane. I'm like, girl, what you teach me your ways? Um, Are you teaching her your ways? Okay. And then they Ghostwriter is gonna be Augusta Reed Thomas, so they're gonna be like this new like edgy type of thing. Oh, and then her Ghostwriter is Florence Price, just to inform for the culture. <laughs> So that's my girl group. We going on tour, you know what I'm saying? Doing guest stuff with Cardi B, you know what I'm saying? Okay, joint tour. Joint tour with Cardi B and my group. And my group collecting dust. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. Um continuing this thing of Women's History Month and that's it. That's our animation. We're moving on. Okay. So let's get into the topic for today. So I was scrolling through um, Facebook, which I don't usually do because there's too many aunties on Facebook. All right. It's not. I mean, I don't really have that many, to be honest. My teacher uses Facebook a lot, though. I don't really be on Facebook. I'm, you know, we mail raise a lot on Instagram. So, and I came across this article um, entitled, I'm exhausted from trying to be the right kind of black girl at work. And my ears went straight up. Right. I was like, what y'all talking about so basically the article is just it's, it's more of a think piece mm-hmm. um and it's this girl talking about how she was in black spaces it's like, honestly like i'm ready, reading the story i'm like this is me i feel like so many black girls have this perspective so she was in black spaces her mama said we need you to be in more diverse spaces which just means more white spaces right that literally is what happened to me in middle school but it ended up not being as white but yeah yeah like you know i mean i don't i didn't have that experience because i was always in this like diverse evanson's pretty diverse for what it is so i was always in this space um but you know you start taking honors classes and you, you stop being in class with your friends mm-hmm. um and then she goes to college she's tired of putting on the she starts putting on the white voice in middle school or whatever doing all this stuff and then straightening her hair and uh yeah stop wearing rock aware start wearing asking for Vera bradley right and abercrombie and fitch for what and we could talk about that but and then and then she goes to goes to university and she's like now nah, i'm tired of this mm-hmm. black power blase blase gets to work and starts dealing with all these microaggressions and all this crazy stuff i'm talking about these are macro some of the stuff some i was like macro some gross. of them i was like i was like yo i mean i could be homeless <laughs> like some of the stuff is like people someone's called her like a little girl yeah she called like, her little girl <laughs> and you know what honestly 
I just don't understand how some of y'all end up in these situations. Just, like, remember I told you about my teacher who said that she was on that flight and that dude was like, that dude was like, oh, well, thank God it's a little better because the last time I was flying to this place, it looked like we were going to Africa. I don't understand how y'all are in these situations. I just, people just do not say stuff like that around me. They do not. But you know what? For the first time, I'm 25. And for the first time in my life, someone touched my hair. And I was mortified. Where? I didn't tell you. No. I didn't tell you. No. I was mortified. <gasps> it is violating. Girl, I was at the place we work on at a Saturday morning performance. Oh, right. And you know exactly who touched my hair. She's like, your hair is so beautiful. Yeah. That, what the, yeah. She's like, your hair is so beautiful. I'm like, I was like. This is not happening. That's I'm 25. You dusty. Mm. I, <laughs> okay. And I, I um, I've had white friends. I've never had a. I've never had a white person touch my hair. I've, I'm 25. And you know what I? You know, and it's like I wasn't nice about it. I just like pulled my. I was like, I didn't say like, don't touch my hair, because mm-hmm. I was like, my mouth couldn't even form those words because those are that's foreign to me. <laughs> it's it's foreign. I had. But it's like I'm a violist. I I've been around white people. Mm-hmm. I'm from Evanston. I have. This is gonna sound. I'm not even gonna say that. <laughs> I'm around white people. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I've never had someone touch my hair. Black girls touch my hair. Mm-hmm. I hate when black girls. Your hair is so soft and straight. I'm like not with your greasy hands now. Through right. Girl. I did touch Venus hair because she got that new hairstyle I had never seen before. But I asked and you her. asked her. Yeah. <laughs> and I still I still wasn't inclined to touch Venus hair. I was like. I never seen those before. Yeah, interesting. They look springy. Yeah, they are. They like I've never seen. I've that never before. seen. I've never. And, and obviously, like I didn't need to touch it to the point where if she did want me to touch her hair, then I wouldn't have touched she, it. Exactly. It wasn't even. Thinking but she you also wanted. she leaned. She was like, "Yeah, touch it." So I was yeah, like, she invited you to touch it. <laughs> like, and I'm just like, I've never like I'm telling you, you get fresh braids. Your friend be like, "Oh my god, let me let me let me." And you could go like these and like, girl, your <laughs> twist out is cute. Black people touch my not hair. see any of these movements that we're doing. <laughs> Black people touch my hair. Mm-hmm. It was it was like I don't. My mom and my grandma have an issue with that. Like every time my grandma just come up behind me and just start running her hands through and be like and, and just twisting things around and <laughs> what you doing with your head, Lainey? <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> Always, especially when I when natural. But you got the same thing when I went natural. Mm-hmm. My grandma was like, "So do you ever comb your hair?" My grandma. <laughs> She stopped even greeting me when I came to the door. She would, it was just, I would be like, hi, grandma. She'd be like, so. Girl, we got to do episode on grandmas. So I feel like our grandmas are, yours is, yours is American, mine is Jamaican, but they just act the same. <laughs> and my grandma used to, my grandma, if she, she's, my grandma would like grab my hair. It's hilarious. But so what you, what you gonna do with it? <laughs> like, or like if it's straight, she would be like, oh, black people touch my hair. Mm-hmm. It's never, that was interesting. But like, I still, even then, and I think I still handed. I was just like, um, I don't understand how y'all end up in these situations, right? And and then one of the things she said, um, she said she had like a couple of like rules for herself, like a mental list of things not to do. And one of them says, don't wear your hair in two low buns anymore because the last time you did, someone grabbed them and called you a Powerpuff Girl in a meeting. Inside, I couldn't. First of all. <laughs> First of all, first of all, why are you doing that? Period. Then why are you doing it at work? And then why are you doing it inside of a meeting at work? There's just so many levels to this. And it's like I feel like this just goes back to I'm, I'm not gonna say whatever because like I said, someone touched my hair. I didn't pipe up. I was just like, girl, you right. But it's like people know who they can mess with mm-hmm. because how come I never and like this lady, she she's known me, mm-hmm. so maybe she thought. You know what I'm saying? Like I've known her for about, about two years now. Before I knew her before we we I started working at this place, um, and maybe even longer actually because I've known her since I've been doing New Horizons. So maybe that's what it was. But people know who they can mess with because I want want somebody at Eastman to try me. Oh, uh, somebody at Eastman. They didn't touch. They asked and reached and then realized and were like, "Never mind. I'm not gonna touch it." <laughs> I was just like, "I want someone to try me." Yeah. Because I'm not finna, you're not gonna make me feel uncomfortable. You know mm. what I'm saying? I don't care where we are, and like, but honestly, we we can get to this. But like, the this this stuff that's happening to her, 
makes me worry about letting that orchestral job. Mm-hmm. It just it just makes me worry because you can't pipe up at people when you're not tenured. That right. that trial year and you go into a concert and you you know you might have your twist out and what what's y'all hidden policies about that and it's just like that makes me nervous mm-hmm. i'm not looking forward to that trial year and people especially like there's so much old ignorance in orchestras right you yeah. know and you should be wearing your hair like that it's unprofessional and i can't see behind you mm-hmm. blah, blah, blah. Oh. girl um i wrote down those lists too um some of these things i find myself doing um so I asked you, did anything jump out to you? One of the things um, is this like, yes, the survival mode. Like she said, survive. She's always finding herself in survival mode. I haven't felt like that in a while because I told you like I just stopped caring. Um, but I wanted to know like, do you ever feel? I know we talked about when I first met you. You might mm-hmm. you felt this way, but after like us with the black students at Eastman and classically black and like now all the black people coming together and we just like mm. like do you still feel this idea of like survival mode at Eastman hmm. I don't feel I mean the only the only like I feel like after all the black stuff probably not um because most of the time I just pipe off I just pipe up you know whatever and it's fine I guess there are times when I feel that when it's like I'm not doing well and something like you know I've already talked about how I struggle with all skills and stuff and I feel like I gotta you know um I feel like it's not okay for me to be struggling with stuff because you can't like you said you can't be like oh you know I'm just going through a bad time and I'm just going through it like you can't make the excuses like that when, when you're brown black. like it's like, <laughs> like I'm told you I told you I'm working on a um I'm working on a, a on a group project in one of my classes and th- my partner is like, well, we could just ask for an extension. I'm like, for what? Mm-hmm. Like, why don't we just turn it? I'm not used to being. Yeah. In that, and it's like, she said, one of the things that jumped out to me as well is this idea of like working twice as hard for half as much. Mm-hmm. And like, I know like people, are, white people are like, girl, like let it go. But blah, blah, that's not true. It's true. It's like, I'm not going to ask for an extension because now I don't, I don't, I remember I got called into a teacher's office for <laughs> hey jasmine <laughs> and um <laughs> and you know he was like why did you why'd you do this or whatever and i'm and i'm like i was just trying to keep the ship from sinking that's the first time i told a professor how much i actually have on my plate mm-hmm. like and i don't i didn't even mention the podcast right it's like lots of hours a week on top of that depending yeah. on depending on the week who's editing whatever but if we're doing photo shoots whatever that adds it's a lot of time into the podcast. I didn't even mention the podcast. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? It's just like the 30, 30 hours a week of teaching and I have two majors and I'm a grad. It's like, I, that's fun. Cause I was trying to save myself, but I don't mention that stuff. She I said, she is a super woman. Yes, she is. Do you see how you look? Yes, she is. I don't know the rest of the song. Thank God. <laughs> God is faithful to all. I'll all Google it. It's no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I remember I sat I sat in music history last year and I watched we do presentations and I watched this girl get up there with no PowerPoint <gasps> in grad school stumbling okay. over her words not just not making a lot of sense and I was like if if I did this it would be perceived so much differently to be fair, I don't know what she got in her grade. I don't care. Mm-hmm. But I'm just saying, like, black people can't do that. Mm-hmm. We can't be mediocre. You know what I'm saying? We just, we don't have that privilege mm-hmm. of mediocrity. And I don't care. What, you can DM me if you want to. That's fine. Ooh. Because it's like, I just, we just don't have that opportunity to to miss the bell and to, to um miss the mark and ask for extensions. I'm like, yeah, there's teachers who'll be like, yeah, you can have an extension. I don't care. But mm-hmm. it's just like, just the way we have to move in spaces because of stuff like this. It's just, it's, it's a lot. Um, so is there anything we talked about this stuff? She talked about like being palatable. Mm-hmm. 
is anything equivalent like this happened at Eastman or anywhere else in classical music? This idea, like, you feel like you have to be palatable. Def- yeah, that's definitely something that I, because that's something I've, t- I think I've talked about it in the past of, like, just it's been conditioned in me from a young, like, from a young age that you may very well be the first black person these people meet. So, you know, be on your P's and Q's. Mm-hmm. And obviously, like, to me, I guess the way I interpreted <laughs> that um, from being little is just like, you know, your manners the way you would act around like you know older people Mm -hmm. um but I started you know just kind of retreating inside of myself because a a lot of things is like a lot of things is also a cultural disconnect like things that are funny like that black people relate to that is very much a big part of my sense of humor that I say and then nobody laughs because Mm -hmm. they're just like I don't get why that's funny you Mm -hmm. know so to make myself more palatable i i will like i feel like when um back when i didn't really have any uh black friends here i was very much like a watered down version of myself or like the small talk version of yourself Mm -hmm. but all the time oh my god like (laughs) and that's why it got to the point where i was just like when i was finally just by myself it was just like i let out a deep sigh i was just like finally wow (laughs) like yeah every time i would close the door to my room i'd just be like oh my gosh thank god like <laughs> i could not imagine i mean i just don't have i haven't had that experience you know what i'm saying it's like once i stop caring you know i and like i got into an argument this is gonna be a future episode but it's like not an argument but a discussion with someone about like code switching and stuff like that and like i just don't do it mm-hmm. i mean and I, it's like because i have a student every every class i teach I, god always blesses me with a student that gives me a run for my money mm-hmm. and we'll call this student uh anna okay and Anna and I are the same person we are the same personality we are lit we are always on we don't want to do what we don't want to do we gonna tell you we don't want it we honest we don't care and we we interact with that way and my boss I was like don't and my boss is not like uh yeah, don't do like that a he's, stickler or anything. He, ain't, he, he trifling too <laughs> trifling and you ain't gonna tell me nothing either so you can go on like that's the relationship I have with him I'm like anyway you done <laughs> like we're more equals I'm, mm-hmm. I respect him as my boss but after that it's like girl anyway <laughs> you done you clapping your fingers stabbing your fingers back in my classroom why don't you go do something you know <laughs> but <clears throat> he's like you gotta you gotta teach her she needs to learn code switching but I'm like I'm not teaching Anna anything let her be herself because I've seen her interact mm-hmm. I've seen she knows she she came up to my boss and she had her dad's a photographer mm-hmm. and you know she's like these are my my dad's business cards she knows how to act mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying I'm not gonna don't water down your personality she's not gonna go into a job interview and be like you should hire me because you know what I'm saying like da, 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 da. like she's yeah. not an idiot mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying be yourself yeah you know what I'm saying I stopped that cold switching i'm not doing it i think there's a time and place mm-hmm. you know what i'm saying i don't go in class and be like yeah so uh gang gang gang, gang, gang. when we talking about dewey and his educational principles or whatever you know what i'm saying like they, <laughs> you know, like no i'm in an education seminar mm-hmm. and i should speak in coherent sentences mm-hmm. that's not me being on the phone with my friends mm-hmm. but when i'm on the phone with my friends i'm like i'm not gonna water down myself you know and I, i've learned that through time because i used to do it mm-hmm. because because you think <laughs> This is gonna sound terrible. You think that that's what they want. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? It's like she said something about, um, yes, I'm black, but look how much we have in common. Yeah. You know? And it's like you you think that's what they want. Mm-hmm. You know, maybe if I talk like this, you know what I'm saying, and I just I just mind my business, you know, like, yeah, Pagani, he's so great. And you say bah and you do all this <laughs> stuff and you it, they at the end of the day they still think you black. Mm-hmm. They still they still have preconceived notions about you they still think you're ratchet they still think you came from the hood they still it don't matter how well you speak it don't matter how well you play it don't matter none of that they Mm -hmm. at the end of the day you black Mm -hmm. and they don't care so that's and when i realized that and i'm like at the end that you still think i'm black after i'm changing my voice my hair was perm because my because ina refused to comb my hair Mm -hmm. it had nothing to do with me whatever because when i started wearing my twist out i was gang gang Mm -hmm. i wore my twist out everywhere when i i mean because i'm a woman it's less because I'm black because I'm a woman. I do certain things when I go into a job interview. Like I was taught as a woman to pull my hair back into a low bun, not because don't have your twist out popping, but just, it's just stuff that I was taught, you know what I'm saying? Um, but not to wear bright, not to wear like dominant colors, which is problematic. But when I was going through like the interview training stuff, yeah. at the later, and it also I, depends on what job you're applying. Yeah. For. You know what so. I'm saying? Like, and that's all like, I'm, I'm going for a teacher, you know what I'm saying? So it yeah. doesn't matter too much. 
it didn't matter too much. But when I went to my when I went to interview for my public school job, I, I pulled my hair back into a bun because I was taught to do so. Mm-hmm. It had nothing to do because I was black. And guess what? The assistant principal was staring at me with a twist out. You know what I'm saying? Um, she and she was the only other black woman in the room. Mm-hmm. So it's like at the end of the day, they still think you black. So yeah. I, that's that's the main reason why why I um why I stopped and I was having this conversation with my cousin because you know Jamaicans and Africans they like to be like nah I'm Jamaican nah I'm Bohemian nah I'm from Nigeria when you get put up by the police you are black right because they're gonna be like oh you oh, oh. Jamaican oh snap yeah, man. right Love. go on then man yeah <laughs> love Bob Marley all his work nice well done 420 Good. Buffalo right. soldier you know this is great on right no you're black <laughs> and this idea of, that's why i just don't code switch i just don't do it yeah and they, I, mm. i'm not so i can't say i've had i've experienced anything like this at eastman for myself just because like i'm katie wherever i go i'm annoying and loud and and what i will say is that i don't do any of that palatable stuff like usually i do it to be cordial to people that i already know i don't want to talk to or be friends with mm-hmm. um and i don't uh, try to be palatable for the sake of my peers because i don't care what y'all think exactly. because y'all we all on the same level like that doesn't make any sense to me like the whole not speaking up in class discussions because you don't want to be too controversial or putting mm-hmm. your head down when they start talking about race and slavery like i've been in a class not a class <laughs> it was a training session for like bias and stuff mm-hmm. with another black person um i could tell you who it was later but this person like when we started talking about race and all that was just trying to was just like oh and like was visibly like uncomfortable and like you know and like that's one Which thing is fine, uncomfortable guess, yeah. but also like <laughs> not wanting to speak up not wanting to bring attention you you would know who i'm talking about someone where we'd be like hey what's good yeah, like don't want to exactly um don't really want to do that and, and i remember i was like hey it was like a dance thing and i was like hey we gonna twerk he was like i'm not doing that here these, these are not my people i'm like i'm your people exactly. and i'm here and, like, they think, <laughs> and they think you're doing it at home anyway <laughs> right so i'm just like <laughs> you know they can see you black right right (laughs) they can see it so like all that in class discussions i'll be you know on sometimes i'll leave it back because i'm like i want y'all especially when they ask uncomfortable questions because they am waiting for you to speak yeah i'm doing you a favor by speaking up first so i'm gonna speak last and that's why i I had (laughs) we had a racial conversation in my class the other week and i'm just sitting there i'm like i'm gonna let y'all take this Mm -hmm. and i'm just gonna sit here I'm going to let y'all talk. I'm going to let y'all go. And we were talking about colorblindness. I told you this. <laughs> and I'm let them go. And they were, they had their opinions or whatever. And like, you're, you're, this is not a problematic class mm-hmm. because these are educators mm-hmm. who, who they're good educators who have like, in my opinion, a heightened level of thinking. Okay. So to me, there's not one person that in that class is problematic, but you might say problematic things. So I'm like, I'm just gonna let you sit here. Okay. And they're talking about colorblindness. I'm like, you know, I think colorblindness is blase, blase, this and that. And I'm, I'm listening to them talk. And I'm finally like, colorblindness is impossible in a country that was founded on racism. Ain't nobody saying nothing else after that. Cause y'all going back and forth, you know what I'm saying? And that's probably the most I would say on that, mm-hmm. you know? <clears throat> but it's like, I'm, I mean, I don't, the palatable stuff, like, no, I'm lit regardless. We was at the, the function that Austin threw. Did that's how you Mr. Taylor called a party of function the other day? I stand. <laughs> that just reminded me. <laughs> I stand. I was like, I know I like you. Right. When I was playing that fast part, he was like, you cooking that. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> I, was like I need to start taking lessons with him on the side. He is so black. <laughs> and people, and he said, he said something about that. And I'm, he said, he, I'm sure he, he'll be fine with me saying he, he was in a meeting with, with faculty meeting. And someone in passing was like, oh, you know, I don't see you as black. <gasps> oh, no. And he he wouldn't tell me the fact. My, he's not that messy. He would not tell me. Dang, that. I want to know who it is. <laughs> he, he Ooh, not, okay, so it's a string department. Let's narrow it down. I don't think it was a string department. He, well, oh. I, you know what? I have no concept because he refused yeah. to tell me. What kind know, of meeting it was. It exactly. He also said it was in passing. So I was like. And and th- there's so many problems with that. This, I'm sorry. He was like, it's divisive. It's you telling us that there's good black people. And exactly. Bad because black if people. you don't see, if you see me in a good light, but you don't see me as black, then how do you see black people? Exactly. That's not a compliment. And so Miss Taylor about <laughs> it, Mr. Taylor about it. He's like, well, that's funny. It's the first thing I see in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, like, my- y'all say these little microaggressions that y'all think. I might are- have to catch a lesson with Mr. Taylor. Like, well, like once a month. <laughs> like, <laughs> Mr. Taylor about it. <laughs> and it's like, you, 
these little microaggressions y'all think they're helpful you think like you're being nice you think but it's just it's just like furthering your ignorance you Mm -hmm. know what i'm saying but I don't understand why people think that it's a compliment to be like, you're not like the other black people. Like, my mama's black. All my sisters and brothers and my cousins are black. Like, I'm not just one black person. I can separate myself from everyone and you can insult literally everybody else and not me. And I'm not going to feel some type of way about that. Are you kidding? That doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make any sense. But Y'all are so loud. But yeah, I'm like, I'm not gonna try to be palatable and like that I'm holding my tongue. And even like at this point, like there are certain people in which I will... I would say things in front of. I wouldn't say things directly to. Like, I went to that town hall meeting that mm-hmm. I got to tell you about. There were some people saying <laughs> stuff to Dean Rossi that I was like, okay, I probably wouldn't say that so pointedly mm-hmm. at that particular person. Because it's time and place. Yeah, and I also will say, like, I don't really, like, joke around. I'm not like, eh, with my teacher. Like, you know, like that. I could, But also, I see what you're saying. Yeah, I see what you're saying. But, <clears throat> well, you know, cause I took a lesson with that lady at at that school mm-hmm. that i'm considering and um uh, i was like well yeah da, da, da. like i i'm i'm still personable you know i have conversations mm-hmm. but with mr taylor I'm, mr taylor <laughs> <laughs> he was like don't argue with me <laughs> in studio class uh, he, he said something to me i'm like mr taylor but he's like don't argue with me just do it i was like yeah i don't uh, know, argue and i was just trying to make you see my side <laughs> Um, yeah I don't really I don't know and like even you you know me like when I'm around somebody who's my boss like with our boss at that place that we both work now like it's a little bit different with him I mean, but, but like I'm, when I was working I'm, in the office over here I'm there everywhere mm-hmm. even <laughs> Bert came out of there he's like how come you always having so much fun here and I'm like let me start having so much fun before you give me something to do <laughs> like the gutters need to be at this point I think Bert you go up to the roof and- <laughs> I think Bert listens to this so <laughs> really? yeah, I think so um, I the cleaning the gutters from now on cause um yesterday at that town hall like I said something and like a couple of people um you know said some things but like I made a statement that was very like pointed and then people was like oh my weird and started clapping and whatever and like there was a couple of people that got claps after what they said depending mm-hmm. on what they said mm-hmm. but even since then that was yesterday afternoon I've gotten two emails people being like oh my god the lady like thank you for saying that because so hey, many vigilante. people said all right because some people will sit around and bite their tongue I'm like not, like this particular issue mm-hmm. is is too big for me to ignore Mm -hmm. so like or for me to bite my tongue on anything i'm gonna say everything i gotta say Mm -hmm. so i'm not gonna you know water myself down in that in that sense but i will say i am a little i'm i've been working on it but it's been conditioned this is like years and Mm -hmm. years of being conditioned to think this that i'm trying to undo yeah so it's 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 gotten a lot better it's take it's it's come a long (laughs) way but it's gonna take some time so what do you think is the right type of black girl in classical music what do you think people think that is docile because i see a lot of people um i see a lot of people especially on twitter but you know i say on twitter who compare black women to other other women Mm -hmm. every single time um that it's like um black women y'all do too much and y'all too bossy and y'all too this and you just too big of a personality and you expect too much so somebody who's just you know docile and malleable Mm -hmm. and um and like even in the article she lists uh, like a couple things like don't don't bring too much attention to yourself Mm -hmm. don't don't wear your hair too big don't show emotion Mm -hmm. be soft-spoken i'm like nah speak with purpose Mm -hmm. like (laughs) that's what my mom always says she says um i'm not yelling i'm speaking with passion Mm -hmm. like (laughs) um and people and i feel like the right type of black girl is somebody who's like afraid to do that who's afraid to just to get into the thick of things and Mm -hmm. be like well yeah that's what i think in what you going you know and i think it's hard in classical music because a lot of things about like um what am i trying to say like it's like it's levels to this you know what i'm Mm -hmm. saying like if you if you a section bass player you're not gonna be piping up right you know what i'm saying because of of deference right you know what i'm saying um but i think it, and i also think in what spaces but you're I'm also a, not gonna talk to me in kind of way but yeah yeah but i think um like even though what you said about last week with the with the with the bass player shout out to y'all who came who ready to roll up <laughs> <laughs> some of y'all was like so we pulling up or what? <laughs> But um, even stuff like that, you know, you're just supposed to sit back and like, I don't understand what people expect us to do in those situations. Like, I'm just supposed to sit back and like, let you call me a monkey, let you yeah. let you push me around. I'm just supposed to, you know what I'm saying? Because I'm in the section, I'm still a person, I'm grown, and I'm and I'm here, I'm here with you, right? Like you look dumb. <laughs> I 
just don't i don't understand and it's also i think it depends on in what capacity in classical music because i'm mm-hmm. i'm in i teach in classical music you know what i'm saying mm-hmm. i'm an orchestra teacher and i i'll be like ha 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 snap y'all play that again like mm-hmm. you know I'm, I'm that big personality i am gathering you because why don't you practice and why mm-hmm. are y'all continue to settle with being pathetic right but it's like i'm that personality too so i think it depends on where but we're talking about like when we're in a in professional they want you to be quiet but i think it's just difficult because of like the structure of it like you're not gonna be from the back of the section being like uh right what's and- the bowing you know what <laughs> like- you know like, that's not really but i think when you interact with your peers you know you're not gonna make me not feel like i'm i'm I didn't work hard to get here. Yeah, and, like, and even in teaching, because when you have <laughs> colleagues that feel like they can insert yourself, insert themselves in things that you're doing, I had an issue with that. Mm-hmm. Um, and even my grandma called you, called me because I said something about this person, and she mm-hmm. was like, "You can't say that." <laughs> like, but she had me messed up. Um, and you're not gonna come in here acting like you can do what I'm doing better than me and exactly. giving me suggestions in front of my kids. Oh, absolutely yeah. not. Cause I will gather you in front of the kids. And now, I, now we both out here. Looking, exactly. Looking crazy. Now we. Psh- because um and even the stuff that like like you said like you'd be messing around with the kids and whatever like i usually don't i don't I'm not gonna say i don't get along with kids i don't joke around with kids because i feel like we have nothing in common and like, so kids like, are great they're so fun but some of like the i am different like with the like with the black kids because i want them to you know you know i'm still relatively i'm younger than they think i am mm-hmm. for sure um um and just to know that like you can be in this space and you don't have to be like you don't water down yeah exactly so you can you have an orchestra teacher who like because i remember i was teaching them about dynamics and the dynamic changed from like forte to piano and they had an entrance and i was like see y'all came in with all of this mm-hmm. you know ready to play <laughs> meanwhile i says piano what you doing you gotta say that for later and then when you get them together um you know of course they get quiet mm-hmm. but i'm walking past this group of girls i'm like what y'all talking about y'all talking about boys over here what y'all talking about mm-hmm. like and then they be like we not talking about nothing hey, ain't no <laughs> boys over here. like you know like just to have that rapport with them but it like other teachers just be like y'all gotta be quiet y'all gotta yeah, like, no. like that's why and like especially like i when i was to public school my <laughs> i had a student name i'm not gonna say her name but she was like miss brown you're so ratchet you always yelling and, and i'm like but i'm here in front of you as a violist you know what i'm saying you mm-hmm. can see me in this light you know because you come to orchestra class you have a black teacher mm-hmm. you know so i'm not watering down nothing now like like i said when i get that orchestral job you know i'm gonna be i'm not gonna be palatable but mm-hmm. i'm gonna i know time and place mm-hmm. you know what i'm saying but i'm, I'm personality be there regardless you know what i'm saying um let's jump down to this this is what this is what i'm interested in uh what do you want your peers to know just in case they're confused mm-hmm. um i really didn't come here to be friends with none of y'all so wow <laughs> that's not that's not that's whoo that just came i'm pretty honest that was like a gnat it just hit. i did not expect that <laughs> wow because you were expecting it. i'm kidding after that but i'm not i know you weren't um, kidding i'm just i just okay. wasn't expecting um i mean to be honest like i'm not i don't want to come off as like hostile and i'm you know bump y'all and all that Mm -hmm. but at the end of the day like i i um i'm very me and you know that like the whole i can't fix my face thing all comes from the fact that like i cannot pretend to be somebody else Mm -hmm. and i would rather not have any friends and pretend to be somebody else that literally defeats the whole purpose of friends exactly to 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 change yourself and the things that you like and suppress your interest Mm -hmm. to be friends with other people that defeats the purpose of having friends Mm -hmm. you're supposed to have things in common you're supposed to have fun with your friends why would i abandon all the things that i think are fun and the things that i'm interested in the things that i like just to have physical like bodies that i can hang out with yeah that doesn't make any sense so um at the end of the day like i mean i would like to have that whole like oh my god college experience whatever whatever but then the day i did come here to get a bachelor's of music and a performance of the double bass and that's what i came here for um and I'm not, and if that's what you're expecting from me, you're expecting for me to try to fit into like a mold and cry I me and I don't know what to tell you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I think it's for, for me, especially like this, this is not like an overnight type thing, you know, mm-hmm. like the, you know, I went through, you know, I went to school with, um, with a lot of different types of people. And then as soon as I started to get up into them higher classes, I started doing the stuff this girl was talking about in the article my hair was already straight because like I said, you know, refused to deal with no curls. Mm-hmm. And, and also like every time I, just as, as a side note, I don't, it's really weird to see people like straight in their hair to be more palatable just because that's not, wasn't my experience. Like mm-hmm. people, people had 
braids and and all different types yeah. of stuff like that's this that this was not my experience and it's like it's like really not weird to me because like obviously i believe it but it's like it's different for mm. me to be i like, was kind of like in the middle of that because mm. i didn't conscious that's just always how i wore my hair i either had braids or my hair was pressed mm. um and i didn't um actively think um i'm straightening my hair to be more white because i was always around yeah. black people i never act, but i did notice that the reason why i went natural is because i saw everyone else going natural and i and i think i told you this i was thinking like oh yeah natural hair like that's cute whatever i couldn't do that because my hair is too nappy but you know whatever mm-hmm. and then and i was in high school and i was like girl what are you talking about so then i was just like no nah, i'm gonna just go ahead i'm gonna just do it and be natural like it was just like it wasn't that i was actively doing that but there was a little bit of um mm. internalized mm. racism mm-hmm. as as far as like how i had how i viewed my hair texture mm-hmm. which i found out and then then undid by mm-hmm. you know yeah. by making myself you know go through the whole thing and be a natural for like a year and some change and like mm-hmm. i mean i guess still now because i haven't pressed my hair in years mm-hmm. so yeah i mean yeah yeah it's it's i see what you're saying i mean even from i'm trying to think about like, my natural journey i think i went natural because i just stopped to me, it was like a waste of money. Mm. And then I was like, well, this is kind of dope. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? But um, it, this is not an overnight process. I had the white voice. That's what I use. That's what I call it. Mm-hmm. Where it's like, I can't even find that voice. I can't even put it on if I want it. So like, it's weird because that's how I always would speak. Because you're in these AP classes with people and you want to sound smarter. That And it's mm-hmm. like, well, so it's you don't sound smart if you're black. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's like that kind of stuff. No one told me that kind of stuff. You yeah. know what I'm saying? I just figured that you know if i speak like this you know it'll make it'll make it easier you yeah. know and but i just got tired of it literally just got tired of it and i'm like no nah, i'm gonna stop mm-hmm. and that's that was the end and i just i speak the way i speak like in studio class i was like this delaney <laughs> where 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 were your syllables in your name i'm like this delaney we playing eyeglasses <laughs> like <laughs> because <laughs> that's how i say your name i don't say delaney mm-hmm. I, I, can't, I can't remember time i'm delaney Mm-hmm. So I'm like, this is Delaney playing eyeglasses <laughs> in a studio class at Eastman, filled to the brim with white people. <laughs> Actually, no, our studio is very diverse. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's, it's quite crazy. Yeah. His studio is so diverse. I think there's actually less white people in there than minority. I think there's one other person of color in my studio who's Hispanic, mm. and the rest is either white or Asian. No, there's one guy. He's <clears> something <throat> else. Like I think he might be like white and like middle eastern just by his name oh cool. i can tell but um yeah so three people of color in my studio i just realized there's a le- there's a, we have a lot of women in my studio though that's good oh yeah. that's amazing yeah oh shoot are we majority <laughs> i don't i'm not gonna go talk about neck but there's quite a lot of women in my studio but i feel like it's really evenly balanced mm-hmm. asian hispanic right there's two hispanic girls in my studio mm-hmm. asian and a plethora of black people yeah for the four eastman yeah plethora right three. yeah <laughs> and, and that's pretty, four black violas total and that's pretty good for a studio of his size mm-hmm. you know so anyway the point is um i just i just stopped doing it you know what i'm saying and i want my peers to know it's like it's funny how like even though we feel like we're making so much progress it's like it's still so i just watched a video of trevor noah explaining to people explaining to an audience member why reparations only work for black people mm-hmm. and not indentured servants right. you were working towards your freedom we were just working <laughs> you lived you were born and died a slave reparations don't work for people who are mi- treated poorly mm-hmm. um and also racism is not people still think black people i just don't get it, it but racism doesn't benefit us <laughs> we have no power even in even in black countries white is still viewed as is they're, a, they're literally still having first black such and such in south africa it's a, okay <laughs> um so, <laughs> all right so i just want you to know like, like black people black people come in all come from all different backgrounds and have a lot of different stuff to the to bring to the table and we're not all the same mm-hmm. and no one's gonna change themselves so that you are more comfortable that's what i want my parents mm-hmm. to know i'm i'm i always say like if people wrote it out, i'm lit regardless mm-hmm. i don't care what I'm in what situation I'm in. I'm going to have a good time. We're going to be laughing. We're going to be kiki keying And I'm going to be black. Whether I'm playing viola. Whether twerking at a... Like, I don't care. Like, I'm going to be Katie regardless. And I just... I want... I think a lot of black people are, like, realizing this. And I know it's... I don't work in corporate America. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? But I feel like even there, I've been like... So, Susan's not going to get on my nerves today. That's why I can tell you. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm just... And Rashida's not going to try to make me feel bad for being Katie. Mm-hmm. It, that go both ways. And that's the tea. Ooh. 
Okay, like you're not gonna make me feel a type of way for acting the way I act. Um, and I'm not being ignorant or whatever. I'm just like I'm being Katie. And I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna. This world will always hate black people. You know what I'm saying? So I'm not gonna let that affect me. Mm-hmm. I would love for you to join the conversation, please. Like it's it's so much more fun. The more um subscribers we get in and whatever, people are like DMing us now, and it's like mm-hmm. it's like join the conversation. Let us know. Comment below on the episode. You know what I'm saying? We do DM respond. us. We respond. Yeah. Like to most people. <laughs> <laughs> that was trash that was trash but um join the conversation we'd like to hear from you all a lot of our listeners are black and right. we are navigating these spaces so let us know what you think and we are moving on all right so it's time for black excellence where we hype you up gas you up and give you your props because it's room for everybody at the top this week hmm it's literally you. It's not. Yes, it is. Oh, it's, I thought you meant like it's me. I'm like, no, I wanted to disturb. No, it's you texting the group chat <laughs> that just came in on my laptop. So. It's glad that I just glad I, that what I'm just happy every time it's caught. There's evidence, but, but it was you sending the text to a group chat, and you weren't even addressing me. You were addressing the only other person in the group chat. So it's really a residual hit up. I'm, you gonna stop saying that? That's that's, that's what it was. That's the most trifling thing you've ever come up with. A residual hit up. It is a residual. I've, I've, I've been missing that for months. It's a. It's That's a, like your worst. A residual hit up is a. Hit, it makes sense. It's a hit up that you. It comes to your phone, but it's not even for you. You just got it because you in the chat. I get what it means. I'm just saying, like, <laughs> it's your most trifling work thus far. I guess congratulations, whatever way you want to take that. But that's I, the only win I've gotten in a while. So yeah, I'll take it. The only win. <laughs> <laughs> okay, God taking notes. I'm sorry. Okay. Black excellence goes to um, her name is Pretty Yinde, um, and she is a South African soprano. Let me tell you about Pretty. All right, first of all, her name is Pretty, and it's fitting. <laughs> um, secondly, I just I just can't believe what I'm reading. It's <laughs> it's just like ridiculous. Okay, so <laughs> she made her operatic debut at the Latvian National Theater in Riga. Where's Riga? Girl, you know. I should have looked that up. Latvian <laughs> as Carmen, but that don't even matter. She's she sung at the Royal Opera House, Covent Garden, um, National um, Opera de Paris. What? Oh, oh. <laughs> you, you were just being extra, extra with the pronunciation. And I was like, that's what it says, Paris. Um, the Met, La Scala, Opera in Berlin. It just goes on and on and on and on and on. Like she's a fr- she has a huge breadth of work. Um, from South Africa, I'm not gonna butcher your city, sis. Um, <laughs> got inspired by the flower duet, which is like that's interesting to me because like, she was watching like a like a commercial and they were saying the flower duet, and I'm like, mm-hmm. that was your that's a weird inspiration to me. <laughs> Just because it's like you know you would think of like the Queen of the Night aria or something like that, you know. Mm-hmm. She enrolled at the South African College of Music at the age of 16, and then just she graduated summa cum laude. Uh, cum, I'm sorry, cum laude, <laughs> and then it's been snatching edges ever since. Like literally ever since she won her first prize um in vienna in 2009 so i'm assuming shortly thereafter um and then just been on her ascent i'm so it's just ridiculous i just i can't what's that one competition (laughs) where she literally won first place in every category i was like i was like they was probably announcing the winners and and people was probably sitting there like okay she got that one but surely i you know surely i've got the next one in the bag nope her too okay well maybe the third category maybe i might have placed in it nope her too and it's like <laughs> if i was at that competition i wouldn't even feel no type of way because i'd be like there must be a reason why she's snatching edges right like you clean sweep a <laughs> clean sweep that was the um placido domingo's operalia competition how far how long ago was that in 20 uh 2011 so actually no 20 2010 yeah she's been active for about 10 years now so she's just been sickening since 25 <gasps> okay you I'm know what i behind. butchered butchered that okay i butchered that the actual competition i'm like i was reading the the thing backwards her mm-hmm. bio backwards so it wasn't 2010 but it was the uh the belvedere competition but then after that competition in 2011 she won another competition which is the one with the long name that i said mm. <laughs> so i mean she won she she's been snatched just since she was 25 so mm-hmm. oh Twinsies, you and her. Are you joking? No. She wins 
you know what? I don't want even have to. Co- what's what's the piece of the week? Also, check her out. Riga is in Latvia, which makes sense because didn't say like Latvian. But where? Thing. Is that? Latvia? In La- Latvia. Latvia. That's a country. Yes. Okay. <laughs> it's in Europe. Give me a give me a vicinity. Uh, the Baltic Sea. Give me a different vicinity. <laughs> yeah, because I don't know what that is either. What was it? Was it touching? Let me see. Latvia. Oh yeah, duh. I know that's a country, but hold on, where is it at? Let me zoom out. Latvia. It's like east. It's like East Europe, right? It's below Estonia, yeah, and, and above Lithuania, and it's touching. Oh, it's touching Russia. Oh, you were east, east. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's touching Russia and Belarus. You better go over there and snatch their stuff from them. <laughs> <sis>. <laughs> Wait, are you laughing at the same thing I'm laughing at? I don't know what you laughing at. A text from Richard just came in. <laughs> that is not okay. <laughs> I should have put my thing on. Do you not disturb. Have put it on. Do not disturb. Instead of silent, because it's on silent, so it still came in, and I could. See. <laughs> Let's just move on to the piece. Of the What's week. the piece of the week? <laughs> Check her out. We'll link her social media. We'll link her website. Oh, <laughs> uh, uh, this is a, this is a mistake. Right. Okay. So the piece of the week <laughs> this week um is cafe music for a uh, piano trio by Paul Schoenfeld. You know that piece. Mm-hmm. <gasps> you don't know that piece. Mm-mm. Oh, it's lit. It's like, feel. Mm-hmm. it's like jazzy. That's why it's called cafe music. But mm-hmm. it's like it's lit oh my for God. piano and what for piano trio. So yeah, oh, it's like violin. traditional. Yeah, oh, okay. Yes, yeah, for the traditional piano trio. But I'm gonna look that in the description so y'all can listen to it. It goes. I imagine. Yeah, it goes. So I was like, ah, okay, Shawnee. I'm sorry. You know what? <laughs> Um, y'all pray for Rochester because God has officially given up on us. I mean, it is snowing right it's, now. It's snowing. It was on the last day of March. Snowing. It was sixty degrees yesterday. Right and sunny pretty for several days this week. You know, mm-hmm. not like light jacket weather. Right. So and now I have on um, my my winter coat. Right. I have. I'm gonna change my pants because I have holes in my pants. That's not gonna work out there because then I'll be ashy when we get to where we're going. So. Right. Um. Oh, I do have one more thing to say before we uh before we sign off. And I just want to make sure I get that time on this right. Okay, sign off. That was so 90s. <laughs> Signing off. Signing. <laughs> you know what I mean. <laughs> um, so if you're in Rochester, I mentioned this on the last episode, but if you're in Rochester, um five eight five saying no. Gang gang. Oh, okay. One point six zero five. Okay, I'm <laughs> okay. I quit. I quit. I quit. Um, me and Katie will be at Fuego Coffee Roasters um on April six from seven to nine. Come come by our table and say what's up, and we'll have some Wizzle. business cards, some stickers for y'all. Gang gang. Yeah. So come say hey. All right. You can <laughs> sign off now. <laughs> you are trash. <laughs> Thank you so much for listening to Classically Black Podcast. Don't forget to follow us on social media at Classically Black Podcast. <laughs> you have to do the K like that. That's Classically Black Podcast. <laughs> tell your sister, tell your mima, tell your friends about Classically Black Podcast. If you have suggestions for Pieces of the Week, Black Excellent, Blase Blase, send it to Classically Black Podcast at gmail.com and we will talk to you on next week. On next week. All right. You know. Little blackiness for the end of the show. <laughs> Bye, y'all. Bye.